Hey guys, just Janny. I wanted to show you how I made this pendant. It doesn't uh, show very well laying down, so I'll put a picture of it standing up so you can see. But the charm hangs off. So for this one, you need a large spoon. Doesn't matter the shape of the bowl. Uh, just need to have a decent handle. If it's super thin, it's going to be hard because we're going to split that in half. And there goes Elodie Helper. So the first thing we're going to do is I mark the handle about an inch from the top of the spoon bowl. So I'm just going to lay a measure there. Put a little mark. Cut that with my mini bolt cutter. Yep. So the next thing we need to do is decide if you want it left plain or if you want to hammer it for some texture and so if you want to hammer it go ahead and do that and grind off this tip make it nice and smooth and clean it up and then we'll cut it down the center here so uh, if you want to hammer yours like this one I used a little piece of leather on my anvil with my ball peen hammer and that way the leather will keep the back from getting so scratched up when you're doing it so you're going to see all the bumps but it won't be too wrinkled or marred so if you want to hammer it do that if not uh, go ahead and polish this uh, doesn't have to be perfect I run mine in the tumbler, but for the sake of the video, these have not been tumbled. I just put them together, and you can see you're not going to be able to get down in here to clean that out. So, if you're uh, whether you're tumbling or not, it's a good idea to give this a polish here in the middle where it's going to be bent. I liked the hammer texture a lot so I'm going to go ahead and do this one. So I'm putting my piece of leather on here and you're going to hold your spoon bowl so that wherever you're hammering is the flattest part. So when you get to an edge you'll see me turn it up on the edge to get that. And you do the very outside edge last. Okay, that looks good to me. So next we're going to go ahead and clean that up a little bit because like I said before, once you cut it, it's hard to clean down in there once it's not cut, but cut and you bent this over, it's hard to get back down in there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use some polish. I like mag and aluminum polish. I know it's not for silverware but this is my favorite. You just put some on. It's really wet and easy to use. Go ahead and do both sides. And just work it until it starts to turn kind of gray, black. And that's getting all that tarnish off. And once you've got most of that off, it's hard to see, but when your cream is like really dark gray or black, you've probably got most of it off. And I'm running mine in the tumbler anyway. 
is just really to clean this spot right here where my thumb is just so that it's not got anything stuck there that I can't get out later or doesn't come out in the tumbler. Okay, I went and rinsed that off and it's a little oily so I used some Dawn dish soap to get that off. You can see it's it's not super shiny. I've just cleaned off the tarnish. So next we're going to cut this in half to about here. I have no set length. I mean it doesn't really matter I don't think how far. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, I just feel like when the spoon's sitting here it's kind of this spot that's sitting flat. So um, I actually mark that on the back because when I'm using a mini bandsaw you can use your jeweler's saw um, but I happen to have a, a mini bandsaw so I'm using it so I'm going to cut down and when you do it this way it's easier to push through because you have more of a level surface where this way you would have to try and hold it so for mine I'm marking on the back just around there just to give me a guideline where to stop there we go okay so I'm going to go cut right down the middle to there and I'll come back and show you what I did next okay so you can see I have cut that down to that point and you can see I, I went off a little it's not perfectly straight but that's okay I don't think you'll notice when they're bent so the next step I'm gonna take it over the side and I'm going to anneal it if you don't know about annealing I'll put a link to that like how long to anneal I'll put a link to that in the description box so let's go anneal that and then we'll bend it over okay I've annealed mine so next I'm going to bend the top one the one that's going to be the top I'm gonna to bend that back so that it makes its own bail there so I'm using my bail making pliers And I'm just going to grab the one side and get it started till I can get a hold of it better. And just go ahead and bend that around. If it starts going kind of sideways on you, you can stop and pull it back over. Just go slow and steady. Okay, I like mine all the way touching so that when I put a chain through it, it's not going to fall out in the gap. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side, but we're going to bring it forward to make this loop here. And same thing if it starts kind of twisting out the wrong way. Go ahead and bend it in. Uh. 
and then here it's in there it's touching it's not quite as round as I would like but that's okay you, you won't really be able to tell so what I do here is you can go ahead with your bail making pliers and just keep rolling it down and see how that goes and if you get some pliers we want this to be in the center so that it'll hang straight so just grab some pliers and oh, might have went too far get that in the center and you can decide how far you want to pull it down because it's going to let our charm kind of dangle out in front of the spoon bowl so actually I kind of like it there so next you're going to need to file this it's very rough in here I use both my Dremel to get off the the worst of it because it's pretty sharp from being cut and then after I use the Dremel it's not as sharp but it's not super pretty either so I take a needle file and just go over it after I use my Dremel and then it goes in the tumbler and then I put a chain at a jump ring and a charm it's super simple fast and easy and makes a great pendant also I think something uh, ocean related you know, seashells or something to do with surfing would look really good on this because it does look like a wave breaking I was taking these apart because they're going to go in the tumbler and I decided that I did want a little more curl right here so it didn't look exactly like a spoon and I wanted to add this on just in case anyone else is wanting more curl but without if you use pliers what will happen is you'll get a uh, more of an oval than a big sweeping shape so I wanted to mention real quick that I have a bender press and I use the biggest bar and put it on the nylon block and just gave it a press right there so that it would just kind of make that curl up so that is a, another option if you want to give that a little more of a, a wave look. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe.